Tonight, we're all gathered at the beautiful MGM Hotel in Las Vegas to honor the star of the Betty White Show, Miss Betty White. I look forward to being part of this glowing tribute. And about three this afternoon, I got a good start on my glow. <laughs> on the Mary Tyler Moore Show, Betty played the part of Sue Ann, who tried to make it with every guy in the newsroom. But the truth of it is, she's a swinger in real life. She's so desperate the other day at the studio, the security guard caught her giving out Hershey bars to the Osmond brothers. <laughs> I feel sorry for her husband, Alan. He's pretty square, you know. When Betty was first dating him, she'd pretend she was shy. She'd always say, I can't make love with the lights on. Could you please close the car door? <laughs> I give you red buttons. I'm, I'm delighted to be here tonight for Betty White, who once said to her husband, Alan Ludden, not tonight, unless you know the password. <laughs> Why? Why are we giving Betty White a dinner? And some of the greatest women in the history of the world never, never got a dinner. <laughs> Eve, who said to Adam in the Garden of Eden, sure, you're the first man, but not with me. <laughs> never got a dinner. Maid Marion, who said to Robin Hood, I will not live in a house with a little John. <laughs> to my ear who set the president car to give Panama the canal, give us the locks. <laughs> Marie Antoinette who said on the way to the guillotine, can you just take a little off the top? <laughs> Mrs. Anwar Sadat who said to Anwar, make peace already, I'm dying for a corned beef sandwich. <laughs> Bert Lance's teacher. Huh. You said the little Bert. Now let's go over it again. <laughs> the only one is three. Three and three is eight. Eight and eight is 94. <laughs> 94 and 94 is 136. Well, it's always a great pleasure to introduce... Boy, it's nice with glasses. It's always a great pleasure to introduce our next guest, that genuine genius of the cinema, Mr. Orson Welles. Betty, it's a, it's a privilege to be on this dais. I had hoped that because you're a woman, our panel tonight would refrain from their usual gross behavior, but no. All night it's been like watching sweat hogs in tuxedos. <laughs> I'm appalled at some of the vicious remarks we've been hearing, especially by you, Buttons, you mendacious little munchkin. <laughs> TV special recently about King Tut, the Egyptian pharaoh. And when that ancient tomb was opened, <laughs> and he is here to accept the applause, but I know he'd be grateful. When that ancient tomb was opened, they found next to his mummy something even older. Four jokes you did here last night. <laughs> and you, Milton Boyle, I know you have some remarks 
snide ones. A man who's too old to attack a woman shouldn't be attacking a woman. <laughs> Instead of brutal insults and coarse jokes, I, on the other hand, have brought you a little nosegay in verse. <laughs> of all the lovely ladies on TV who grace our screen by night, the last with class who steams my glass is lovely Betty White. Her flowing gowns, her tailored suits, the way she fills her halters. Why, hers are better front page scoops than even Barbara Walters. <laughs> Yes, I've loved you long, don't get me wrong, or think that this is sudden for nothing. Stands between us now, and his name is Alan Ludden. <laughs> Must everybody knows our guest of honor. Betty White is totally dedicated, and <laughs> we go again to, to the <laughs> preservation of wildlife and, what is that? You don't have to get mad at me. What are you mad at me for? I'll put my glasses on and I'll read it. That's all. Oh, domesticated. <laughs> Most everybody knows our guest of honor, Betty White, is totally dedicated to the preservation and wildlife uh, of domesticated pets, right? <laughs> well, tonight we have a surprise for her. Oh, yeah, most everybody knows. I'll do it for you, Dean. <laughs> Most everybody knows our guest of honor, Betty White, is totally dedicated to the preservation of wildlife and domesticated pets. Oh. Like dogs and cats, well, tonight we have a surprise for her. We've invited her favorite pet shop owner, a man who runs the most exclusive shop in Beverly. This is the way you're supposed to do it. <laughs> Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Vital Baboon. Vidal, I did it the way he did it. Vidal Baboon. <laughs> First of all, I'd like to say, uh, I'd like to say hello to the millions of pets all over America. Betty White is one of my best uh, customers. She always comes to me for advice. Recently, she had a problem with a uh, pet he can eat. The dog wouldn't eat. I solved that uh, problem. I trained the dog to eat at the sound of a bell. Of course, it didn't work out too well. The other day, he ate the uh, Avon lady. <laughs> time I met Betty, she brought me her dog. It was a pointer. I told the dog it's impolite to point. Just nudge. You know what this is? It's a personalized dog whistle. It has a pitch that only the dogs can hear. You see, Phyllis Dill as he is, Pop, pick up. <laughs> well, Dean, I've got to go now and walk my uh, dog. 
Walk your dog, you, you tell me he's dead. So, so then I'll uh, drag it. <laughs> I know you already like her. You've seen her on Sanford and Son as Aunt Esta, where she used to give lots of lip to Red Fox. But our next guest is really a kind, warm-hearted lady. Ladies and gentlemen, lovely Miss Luana Page. Thank you, Dean. That's the story of my life. From old red fox to old red eyes. Just because I got red eyes and a white face that don't mean I'm a drunk. I, I, I could be a rabbit. <laughs> Not according to the foxes you've been dating lately. to see what I can see. Now, let's see which one is Betty White. <laughs> Get a bunch of you albinos on one desk and you all look alike. <laughs> Honey, they say the same thing about us, but that's a lie. Honey, we come in all colors. Light, bright, almost white. <laughs> Chocolate, vanilla, tutti fruity, all rude. I see you, Jimmy Walker. Don't try to hide behind your swizzle stick. <laughs> and I heard what you've been saying about me. With your double breasted lips, honey, you can blow a tuba from the wrong end. <laughs> and what you laughing at, Abe Bagoda? You fish. <laughs> You better pray that red fox will be here forever. Cause when he dies, honey, you'll be the ugliest man in the world. <laughs> and don't you sit up there trying to look cute, Phyllis Diller. Honey, I remember your old face. <laughs> the mice would jump on chairs. <laughs> Honey, you had your face lifted so tight, when you raise your eyebrows, you pull up your pantyhose. <laughs> and to be honest, folks, I don't even know why I'm, why I'm at a dinner for Betty White. <laughs> I'm only kidding. Of course, your name is famous. They honor you all over the South, honey. Over every drinking fountain, there's a sign that says, white only. <laughs> I'm probably here because you couldn't get Farrah Fawcett. I wish Farrah were here. That's one faucet really turns me on. <laughs> Honey, don't tell me about your plumbing problems. <laughs> you like a hot water faucet in a cheap hotel. Even when you turned on, nothing happens. <laughs> them hot hands honking. <laughs> you keep that up and you won't be just host of the roast. Mess with me and you'll be jive turkey fricassee. <laughs> now about five years ago I got lucky. Five years since you got lucky? <laughs> so that's what makes you so mean, huh? Listen, sucker. Where I come from, sex is a misdemeanor. Yeah, the more you miss it, the meaner you get. <laughs> Good night, dude. Good night, dude. 
Good night, John Boy. <laughs> and thank you all. I love her, Miss Phyllis Diller. Thank you, thank you, Dean. Thank you very much. There have been a lot of references tonight about my plastic surgery, and I just want to say that I'm not the least bit sensitive about it. It's not easy for me to look this good. You see, I have to do a lot of things. Like every day I use olive oil and mineral oil and vegetable oil and grease, <laughs> turtle oil. In fact, I just got an offer from Exxon. <laughs> they want to drill. <laughs> And I do admit that I had my skin tightened. Everybody knows that. I'm not saying how much. <laughs> Let me just put it this way. If the knot ever lets go, I can slingshot this whole room to death. in honor of my good friend, Betty White. Betty has everything that Miss America has. Unfortunately, they served her child's portions. <laughs> if it wasn't for her hickey, she'd have no figure at all. <laughs> now, actually, Betty is a homebody. Of course, with a body like hers, you ought to stay home. <laughs> Nasty people have complained about her posture. They say that she always looks like she's sitting down. It's not true. She just happens to be short and dumpy. <laughs> I could have had my own show. Actually, uh, they wanted me to star in a series called The Bubonic Woman. <laughs> Betty, I wish you lots of good luck with your show. And I just don't have a jealous bone in my body, and I want you to know that. Besides all the other things my plastic surgeon did, he had me filleted. <laughs> Frankly, I could have had my own show, but I wouldn't do what the producer wanted me to do. Get out of his motel room. <laughs> Greatest rich little. Oh, yeah. Betty, as I stand here looking at those dimples and that Sunday school face, you'd never know what a swinger she was when she was single. <laughs> So when she married Alan Ludden, it came as a big shock to a lot of the men who knew her well. For instance, Henry Kissinger. <laughs> I used to go with Betty, <laughs> and she was really funny. Uh, uh. <laughs> Johnny Carson said, <laughs> but what I don't understand is how she could go out with me and marry what's his name? I and mean, that guy is so square. How square is he? square, he goes to a do-it-yourself massage parlor, takes off his clothes, gives himself a massage, leaves ten bucks, and then goes home. <laughs> I've been leaving twenty.
great comic and a good friend, Mr. Milton Burrow. I gotta congratulate you, Dean. You really look great. Your eyes are so shiny and bright. <laughs> you drinking that Windex again? <laughs> Oh, Dean, oh, I, forgot to, I forgot to thank you, Dean, for the candle and the wine that you sent to my room. But you forgot to send up a girl. That's what you forgot. I figured at huh? your age, just lighting the candle would wear you out. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way to speak to me. No way to talk to me after all. You're talking to Mr. Television. I was on your television set every Tuesday night for 25 years. <laughs> That's a coincidence. I was under it. I, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, wake up. I am here tonight to honor Betty White, which gives you an idea of what's happening to my career. <laughs> Betty has had an unusual career, and this is the truth. When she was 18, they gave her a loving cup because she won a dance contest. She won it by doing the dance of the virgins. <laughs> which she performed from memory. <laughs> and then she went out on the road and traveled with the Tommy Dorsey band. She wasn't a singer, she just liked to travel with the band. That's it. <laughs> it's always a pleasure to see lovely Phyllis Diller over there, look at that face. Phyllis, were there any survivors? <laughs> Look at that hair. Will you dig it? She looks like she was pardoned after the warden threw the switch. <laughs> Dear Marshall, you surprised me tonight. Really? You're usually so good. <laughs> For those of you who haven't seen the show, uh, 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 Dan Haggerty, he's the one, he's the one who walks with the rifle in front and a bear behind. <laughs> J.J. Walker, all shopping with his tie on. <laughs> Now, uh, to introduce our guest of honor, a uh, woman of the hour, there's only one man who can do it properly, her wonderful husband, Mr. Alan Ludden. <laughs> hey, you know, you know, Dean, I'm really a lucky man. I am married to a wonderful woman and a great cook. Married to a wonderful woman and a great cook? Ain't, ain't that bigamy? No, no, no. <laughs> it's when you're supporting two women. That's bigamy. That's insanity. <laughs> <laughs> I realize that a woman is entitled to have her own pursuits. Certainly. But really, do dogs have such a part in Betty's life. It's really her whole life. For instance, when I proposed to her, the first thing she said was, uh, sit up and beg. <laughs> she wouldn't even accept my ring until I rolled over and played dead. <laughs> and then on our honeymoon, she rolled over and played dead. <laughs> you know, However, there isn't a husband in the world who doesn't spend some time in the doghouse. But he should consider himself very lucky if he's married to the best in breed. And I am. Ladies and gentlemen, the blue ribbon winner of my life and the woman of the hour, Betty White Love. this much fun since I was kissed by Ted Knight. <clears throat> and I was really thrilled and surprised to see Dean make it tonight. 
I guess it was about four o'clock this morning, I saw him getting into an elevator with a six pack. <laughs> Three girls under each arm. <laughs> I really would like to say how funny Milton Burrow was tonight. I can't. <laughs> I was really, I found myself hoping there is such a thing as reincarnation. He really deserves a, another chance to be a comedian. <laughs> and Red Buttons, I'm really happy Red could be here. You know, you probably don't know this, Red, but many, many years ago, I, I made a promise to myself. I promised that I would follow your career right from the beginning. Tell me, when is it going to begin? <laughs> and Georgia Angle. I mean, I, I, what can you do with Georgia? <laughs> no, I'm really happy she showed this evening. When I say showed, I mean that in a very nice way. She directed all her remarks to me with great restraint, as you noticed. She's really an old fashioned girl. And one good thing about old fashioned girls, they're gradually disappearing. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm not going to say anything about Abe Vigoda because I really respect age. <laughs> so do I, especially if it's bottled. <laughs> <laughs> old wine is one thing, Dean, but old fish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and there's Phyllis Diller, my dear little cookie. I use the word cookie in reference to her crummy appearance. <laughs> No, honey, I do like your hairdo. I really do. You look like a leaky Farrah Fawcett. <laughs> and Lawanda, I bet you're happy that there is a Betty White show on television this season. I mean, with all the shows like Red Fox and Richie Pryor and Sanford Arms and What's Happening and Good Times and the Jeffersons, it's a novelty to see a white on television. <laughs> Squaring up, I really had a great time, and I want to thank you for a wonderful evening. Dean, I love you. Thank you.